Everton have gone for a mixture of experience and youth. The strong tacklers in number 10, Trevor Skerritt, Jeff Grayson and Les Gawley. They're seeking to curb the Australian tri-scoring machine. The inclusion of flyer Des Drummond at number two indicates that they won't forget the pace, though. Steve Nash, the captain at number seven, very, very confident. He might be the smallest player on the field, but he's certainly got the, the biggest heart on this field. He'll be drumming those forwards. And the Australian side, well, they've got a very, very big centre purring there in number three, Meninga and Rogers, weighing over 30 stone between them. But they too, going for pace, Wayne Pierce at 11, Rod Reddy at 12. We'll be looking for gaps coming in midfield and they'll be shooting through them. Coach John Whiteley has pinned his hopes on number nine, David Ward, winning the scrum possession. He hopes to give Great Britain control of the match and he certainly couldn't have picked a more experienced hooker. A very seasoned campaigner in Test Rugby is David Ward. Number 13, Ray Price. Well, if these Australians do get the possession, this man, seven rugby union tests, 16 rugby league tests, a world-class player in his own right. He's got the skill and he's got the pace to use the ball. <laughs> Referee, Monsieur Rascanier from Pepignon. The first time ever we've had a, an independent referee to referee one of these tests. And a lot of responsibility will fall on his shoulders. He doesn't speak much English, so his knowledge of the, the laws will have to get through to both these sides. So it's Australia from left to right on the screens in green shirts and the goal markings and Steve Rogers to kick off. Great Britain to receive Des Drummond in the all-white jersey and that famous red and blue stripe. The atmosphere here is electric. We've got crowds bursting to get in at these turnstiles. I hope this atmosphere will lift them. Do you think it can, Alex? Well, it's nice to see the referee get in the game straight away. He's going to stand no nonsense. Tremendous atmosphere, uh, a lot of tension on both sides, and I hope it's going to be a tremendous game. I, I hope the viewers will really look towards some great football. George Furburn kicks the touch. A differential penalty. David Ward to take the tap now, 15 yards in. And already we can see something of that. Tremendous tackling from these Australians. Ooh. Jeff Gratian already using his 16 stone. Les Gawley. John Woods. Now Stephen Orton. Oh, and that was a tackle. That was a tackle there from number 10, Craig. Craig Young. And already we can see the emphasis that these Australians put on this tackling. It's solid, it's round the middle. Let's hope that ground's soft for Les Gawley, Great Britain number 11. And an offside decision. The referee spotting Brett Kennedy, Australian standoff, offside. So this is a kick for goal, immediately under the post. But what, what an atmosphere with two minutes gone in the game for this 19-year-old youngster to be taking the kick. This is Test Match Rugby, a 30,000-plus crowd around him. But I'm sure if this youngster gets this ball over those posts it'll do him the world of good he hits it high on the crowd up in the air and it's first blood from young Lee Crooks 19 years of age an ex coach player and that puts Great Britain into the lead by two points to nil Steve Rogers, again, the Australian centre to restart. And what a start for Great Britain. George 
Fairburn certainly wanted to get into the action. He doesn't want these Australians lying on him. This Great Britain squad have been staying at Grimsby all week and they've certainly caught something of the fourth earth. They look to be running better than ever. Morton looking for a gap, probing. Great Britain using the high ball from John Woods. <laughs> A little bit of misunderstanding there from wingman Eric Grove. Obviously not calling for the ball, but he, he does well with it. Well, the referee spotting Jeff Creation for speaking out of turn, I think, to him. And very rightly so. He certainly got on the spot with this game. Not knowing the language, Monsieur Rascagneur will, will need to impose himself on these players. And it's number one for Australia, Gary Brentno, puts the ball to touch. Australia on the Great Britain 25-yard line. Using one or two of their forwards now, probably to, to soften up the English. Les Boyd, this man has proved the danger on the tour so far. And there's Max Krilich, the hooker, steadying the play down, steadying the game down. Sterling. And another offside decision. Well, 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 this time he's caught Steve Norton. The number 13 for Great Britain offside. But I think one thing that the referee is trying to insist upon, and that is that both sides get back 10 yards apart. And here we've got one here. Stevie Norton, just watch the lad here, coming in just behind the referee. Great Britain number 13, play the ball, he is well offside, and like Ray said, the referee is definitely keeping him a good 10 yards. And it's Mel Meninga, it's 15 stone Brisbane policeman, to take the kick. He's already kicked 15 goals on tour. And he gets it. So with six minutes gone, Mel Meninga makes the scores all square at Great Britain 2, Australia 2. Wayne Pearce. Oh, and a good solid tackle from that both uh, Lee Crooks and Travis Garrett. And the scrum down. Well, I think the referee was a little unsighted there, but he gave a scrum for a knock-on. And although we were talking earlier about the size and the skill of this Great Britain front row, it's Australia who are in the scrum lead at the moment. And that could explain one of the reasons why they are. The referee just penalised Peter Sterling for not retiring round the back of the scrum. It's quite interesting though with this new rule. Because young Lee Crooks then was asking the referee, can he kick at goal? Obviously, he's not been reading the read book, uh, the rule book, and uh, there's a little bit of confusion about it. 15 yards again. One of the features so far has been this man's kicking, George Furburn. Keeps putting England on the attack. Fifteen yards from this Australian line. David Ward driving for the line, six yards now. Stevie Norton. Oh! Well, Travis Gary might well gesticulate some points. He came too early for that ball. He must come from depth. 20 minutes gone, still two points each. Oh, and a good bursting tackle there. Brett Kenny in, in space. A lovely run from number six, this Parramatta Sydney standoff, Brett Kenny, Sterling. Les Boyd driving it down the middle. He might only be five foot nine, this prop ball, but he's 16 stone. Village. It's a good high ball. Here's a chance, Melmaninga. Oh, 
what power, what size, as he handed off number four, Les Gill, and Mel Meninga, the huge burly Queensland centre, puts Australia in the lead by five points to two. Man, just watch this Meninga. A long ball out here from Craig Young. Meninga picks the ball up, but just watch him what he does to Les Dill. And Les Dill's a big lad. He knocks him off as though he's a fly on the wall. Watch this, he must be like a mobile tank coming down here. Try and eat scoring, and he's got a lot of pace. What a very good try indeed. What a blow for Great Britain. Out on the touchline. But if, if any kicker has the power and the strength to put this ball over the post. This man, Mal Meninga, certainly has. No, just to the left of the, of the post. Well, this is again Craig Young just flying through. He sees the gap outside, a long ball, and who's there? Only Wayne Pierce. And this lad does well here and burns the ball out to Moringa. Now, just watch this fella. He's got no vivid to beat. Les Dill knocks him off like a little boy. Get off. Off you go, and he's going for that corner flag. George Furburn's a little bit late coming across. A good try. They certainly dump these Great Britain forwards down, these Australians. They've learned a lot of their techniques from American pro football. We've seen little of Steve Norton yet, he's looking for the gap. But these Australians are certainly polluting him. It's Great Britain number 13. If any man can turn the game, it's him. Oh, but well taken. Number six, Brett Kenny, performing a, a sweeping role behind the Australian defence. 15 minutes to go in this first half. Australia still leading by five points to two. Rod Reddy, Australia number 12. Oh, good movement, Peter Sterling, Steve Rogers, Kenny. And it's still going, Wayne Pierce, he's going for that line. Well, that was a magnificent try. And with 25 minutes gone, drop forward, Les Boyd goes over for his third try of the tour. And well might that Australian man be happy. He's excited and so he might well be. Well, Wayne Pierce, a lovely play by young Peter Sterling here. But just watch this Wayne Pierce. Throws the ball out here, he's done all the work. The ball is still coming out, he's still going to part now. To, to Rogers, to Wayne Pierce, who takes the ball now. And from there, the lovely ball from Boosted. But just watch this, it's a surprise choice in this uh, test match. But doesn't he do well here? And Les Boyd inside, and there's a formality of just pulling the ball over the line for a good try. And Malmeninga placing that ball ever so gently on his, his little mound of sand. I wouldn't have thought he, he would have needed that on the soft pitches here in side but obviously he's used to this technique of getting his foot underneath the ball. It's going in, it's accurate. Brings joy to those Australian hearts. With 30 minutes to go of this first half, Australia lead by 10 points to two.
Well, I think they might toss a coin up for that ball. Somebody has it somewhere, and it's little Stevie Nash. The Great Britain number seven must have burrowed and ferreted under there, and he's gone. John Wood still going, this number six. Quickly, the referee wants him to keep going, wants him to keep playing this ball. Lee Crooks. This Australian cover is far too good for Great Britain at the moment. Stevie Norton, Woods again. He's certainly got pace, this lad. And, yes, I think he's cautioned Wayne Pearce for using his boot. Well, the referee, Monsieur Rascagne, is taking him out. He's miming to him because he doesn't know a word of English. But he's certainly got his message home to Wayne Pearce. And it's up to George Furburn to ram the message home now with, with two points possibility. It's Lee Crooks to, to take the kick, rather surprisingly, for one so young, being given this arduous role. And he gets it. So, with six minutes to go in this first half, at least there's some consolation from Lee Crooks, and he does pull Great Britain back a shade with only a six-point deficit now. Well, young Wayne Pierce really lucky not to test the sim bin because he just kicks John Woods as he goes past. It may have been an accident, but uh, I think uh, the referee was right on the spot and he thought it was an accident, but he could have just tested that sim bin for the first time. Les Boyd, Australia will possibly be content to drive down the middle with the forwards. And he does again, knocks off one man. He's built like a little pocket battleship is this number 10, Les Boyd. There's Krillick again. Well, there's a fight for the ball, there's a squabble. The referee says, says, Monsieur Woods, off you get, off you get. Trevor Skerritt. Yes, he wants Great Britain to be allowed to play the ball. Up quickly, he says. And the 40 minutes have gone of this half. We're in extra time. Gration again. And there's the half-time hooter. And as Great Britain troop off the pitch, they certainly have some work put out in this second half. With Australia in the lead, tries by Mel Meninga and Les Boyd. Goal by Mel Meninga. And at 10 points to four, the game's looking Australia's way. This capacity crowd of 33,500 have had little to shout about yet for Great Britain. But at least they've had more to shout about than the eight or 9,000 who have been turned away at the turnstile this afternoon. Hopefully that uh, Great Britain will present something for us. And it's Great Britain to kick off John Woods. Do you think coach John Whiteley will have had a, a real going over in the dressing room at half-time, Alex? Well, I think it have just said some uh, different tactics. We've got to move the ball, we've got to get up off the floor quicker, and we've really got to test these Australians, because in the first half, we give them very few problems. Both sides are, as per programme, no changes as yet in the second half. The problem again, we're playing under international rules and substitutes can only be made for injury or a tactical one, which of course is very, very difficult. Craig Young, and yet another offside decision. Well, this must be about the eighth or ninth offside decision that referee Monsieur Rascagne from Pepignon has given. And if these players don't understand him now, they never will.
Greg Brentnell, the Australian number one. An ex-Australian rules player, this man, six foot one, so he's used to leaping up in the air to catch the ball. Pull back, an ideal position for him. Sterling. Well, that looked an obstruction decision, and it is. And that will be a welcome relief to Great Britain. Well, this is an obstruction there. Peter Sterling here just throws the ball a little bit and just watch Brett Kenny runs in front of the man, takes the man out of the game and another good decision by his friend referees on a great game Trevor Skerritt bowing down the middle let's go Lee. well Great Britain still persevering with these tactics of Pushing the forwards down the middle, but it, it's getting them nowhere. Oh, and a good ball from Norton. But sadly lost, brought away. He's a strong lad, this man, he's a big lad. Oh, and well taken by Furburn. But not taken well enough. And the referee was on the spot, he's given the try. And he indicates to the touch judge, Mr Billy Thompson, that Eric Grove slid over the line. And I think he was right. Great Britain now trailing four points to 13. Well, how strong is this lad? The human mountain, they call him. Very growth, and what a lad. Not Stevie Norton up. George Furburn's coming across to take him. This tries a lot of work to be done. How strong is he? Sticks his hand out. Still running as he's going down. Does he go over? Is he short? You know, I think Billy Thompson did say he grounded that short, but the French referee gave it. 30 yards out from the post. And this kick could put Australia in an unassailable position. Oh, and it's a beautiful kick. Four minutes gone in the second half. Calvin Inga might well put his thumb up. Well, here's the big man growth, the human mountain, just watching. He knocks Stevie Norton up here, and, and Norton's no weakling. And he keeps coming and he's going down the wing. George Furman flying across covering him. But watch this lad. He's still running. He sticks his hand out. He's on the floor. Is he grounded short? I think he was, and so does Billy Thompson, but the French referee give it. Greg Brendel. Oh, and he missed ball. Australia certainly holding their own in these scrums. This was one department we felt that Great Britain would have an advantage, but not so. Yes, and the referee indicates his hand in the air for five minutes, and he sent David Ward, number nine, and Max Grilich off for five minutes in the sin bin. So that's the first time we've seen that in operation in this country. Both of them now will be required to sit in the dressing room for five minutes and cool themselves down. But Australia still win the ball. Oh, and it's Eddie Groth again. He's got 70 yards to go to Brett Kenny. A beautiful pass. Oh, but well tackled by Des Drummond. That indicates something of the speed of that Great Britain wingman. It's still Groth. This number two for Australia is proving a real handful. Peter Sterling. Rogers going for the line, using all his power. He's, he's a yard short. Sterling again, Price. Oh, and a beautiful dummy run. Beautiful dummy run movement. And with 13 minutes gone in the second half, that world-class loose forward, Ray Price, puts Australia even greater in the lead. 18 points to four. Well, this is world-class, isn't it? Just watch this little Peter Sterling here. All the time in the world. And who does he flip the ball up? Ray Price. And what a gap. It's like the M6 going down there. No problem. Five points. Mal Meninga still to looking to put Australia even further in the lead. We've had four tries already from Meninga himself, Les Boyd, Eric Grohl, Ray Price. And this should be his, his easiest kick so far. 
and it is. And so, with 14 minutes gone in this second half, Queensland's Mal Meninga puts Australia even further in the lead by 20 points to four. Well, here we have it again. Quick play of the ball. They're very, very good at this. Ray Price, acting out back, flips the ball to Peter Sterling as he comes now. Watch how quick he goes round. Doesn't this little lad do well here? And Ray Price, you can't give him these kind of gaps. Who went up to get a bus through. What a good try. Australia back in possession, and it's this little man again, number seven, Peter Sterling. Les Boyd. Great Britain have to soak up a lot of pressure from these Australian forwards. Plays it to himself, Price. This Australian number 13, he's suffered from a knee injury on the tour so far, but he looks to have been fine trim now. Paul oh, Rogers checking some handling. Brett Kenny. And Kerry Boosted is over. Well, the Australians are running riot now. A combination there of strength from Brett Kenny, pace from Kerry Boosted, and Australia go even further at 23 points to four. We'll have the plug gates open here, just watch this. Australian centre here, straight in to Brett Kenny, takes the ball, and he just takes it now, and Brett Kenny fires away, looks as though he's going to score, and there's Kenny Boosted for a simple try inside George Fairburn, and just puts the ball over the line. 16 minutes gone in this half, and those Australians they're very, very pleased with themselves. Max Grillich, number nine from Australia, coming back from his sin bin. He's had five minutes uh, spell. And David Ward wanting to get on to him very, very quickly. I don't think this man Meninga can believe he's locked the number of kicks at goal he's getting this afternoon. And another one. And touch judge Billy Thompson indicates another fine performance from Meninga. Well, here we have Steve Rogers here. He does all the work for this try. He does very well here. Holds the ball, precision pass, still going, still struggling through. Should have been put down. And there's Brett Kenny. Simplest of task here. Kelly Booster in support. Up the left foot, inside, round yard, Furburn. Let's go a forlorn effort for a good try. But these Australians certainly now well in control. And none can be more pleased than that man number nine, Max Krillich. He's just had a five-minute breather in the cinema in the dressing room. Whether he's had a cup of tea or not, I don't know. But I think he can afford to now. this boy's got and Kenny oh well that was a weak tackle and these Australians are literally ripping holes through this Great Britain cover and with 18 minutes gone they go even further ahead by 28 points to four Brett Kenny's had a fine game so far he's got the pace on the outside this is where he's beating John Woods and the Great Britain cover well, look at this fella come onto the ball. This is how you run onto it, second row forwards. Wayne Peters, bang, and he's he's going. And watch him as he's got some good legs under him. Lovely ball to Brett Kenny, good support, bad tackling by Desi Dumman, and all the way to the line for a very good try. I think that's just about done it. Already, already kicked five goals this afternoon, Mal Meninga. This is becoming something like a goal-kicking practice for him. 20 yards out, to the left of the post. He pushes it to one side. Well, it looks as if it was going outside the post, but the touch judge's flag indicates that Meninga has kicked the goal. 
Well, this is the way for a lad to run on a ball. Just watch this young Wayne Pierce here. Straight out the tackle, opens his legs, and who's in support? That Brett Kenny again. A little bit of bad tackling by Des Drummond here. Should have put the man down, but once he's got clear, he's raced into the line, and George Furburn, the Cologne up for a good try. Stevie Nash. Good great. Number 12, Rocket Ready from Australia, all the way from Rockhampton in Queensland. The Great Britain still positioned, plowing these forwards down one by one. John Woods. Oh, nice change of pace. Very Hughes. Now here's a chance for Great Britain. Oh! Well, if ever there was a wasted ball, that was one there. It should have been turned inside to Des Drummond. But all praise to Australia for the 13 way price. He covered the situation. David Heron, this substitute from Leeds, now beginning to make an impact in the game. Gary Brentno. Gary Boosted, well. He may feel a little cold stood out there on the wing. He wants to run himself. Ready. Not shown as any real pace this afternoon, Ready. He's quite a sprinter if he could get in the loose. Max Crilly. Oh, and a lovely ball. And just look at this drop forward, Craig Young go. Beautifully dropped. And there's that man, Wayne Pierce. What a try. The combination of front row forward play. Craig Young struggled through. Pass into this sprinter, Wayne Pierce. Who did the rest? 33 points to four in Australia's favour. And that crowd might well look sad. It's a rout here for Great Britain. Well, this is what we are lacking in Great Britain. Just watch this. Match credit shows the ball. First of the two, three, four feeble tackets. And who's there? Brock forward, Craig Young. Strides out, wait, perfect timing. And look at this game. This Wayne Pierce. What a game he's having. What a fabulous turn of foot he's got, and he's just easing down for a good try. And yet another kick for centre Malmeninga. Immediately in front of the posts. And it's an easy one. 15 minutes to go, Australia comfortably in the lead now. And here we have it again with uh, Max Krilich. He does well here to break out of a few tackles. And this is Craig Young striding out, perfection pass. And just watch this young boy go. Strides out all the way to the line where Pierce eases down and blocks it down over the line. Good try. yards from this Australian line. Gration. Let's go, Lee. We'll just look at that tackle there from number 11, Wayne Pierce, and 13. If any youngsters are watching this game, if they want to know how to tackle around the waist with the shoulder, these Australians are certainly giving us a copy boot lesson. Well, I'm just listening to the crowd with David Ward ploughing down the middle and against these fellas it's totally uncalled for and we definitely need the ball moving out to the wings to give us some hope and some pride six tackles coming up and that's a good ball John Woods put back again into that green and gold net there's just no way through Come down five yards from this Australian line. Peter Sterling, the Australian number seven, eager to get the ball in. I think there are still plenty of tries in these Australians if they can get the ball. And they have. Well taken by number 15, David Heron.
Oh, nice pass, nice pass from Rod Reddy. Rodgers, and look at Max Grillick there to grow. Well, this boy can go, he's treating us to the spectacle. But a magnificent tackle from Des Drummond. Well, Drummond might be the smallest winger. But he certainly put the tackle in. Malmeninga. And he loses it. But that was a fine piece of play from the Australians. And good support play from Max Trinich, the captain. He may have been the slowest man on the field, but he certainly set up Eric Grove in that run. But all credit to Des Drummond, the Great Britain cover. They saved what looked like another certain try. And George Furburn to kick to touch. It's a good kick, it's 30 yards, and it puts England once again in an attacking position. But it's from these attacking positions, what we're doing with the ball, that, that really amazes me. We're just sending forwards down, one after the other. Ten yards from the Australian line. Gratian, Gawley. Steve Norton, oh, here's the chance. But another good tackle from that Australian cover. There's always a man lurking behind the, the first defence. Gration, Nash again, oh, the nice ball. Now has come and got the speed. It's still anybody's ball. Well, I think David Heron took a knock there in the groin. That Australian forward was right on top of him. And it's another six tackles. John Woods. He's tried his best in midfield as this Great Britain number six, but there's been no way through for him. Gration. But the dummy didn't quite come off. I think he did right. I think Des Drummond on the wing was covered by Eric Grove, the Australian winger. And a penalty for not allowing George Furburn to play the ball. And quickly taken by Drummond. Oh! Well, I think Des Drummond was hoping to salvage a little pride, a little honour. And sadly, fate wasn't with him. He was snatched out of his hand. Great Britain, Stevie Nash to put the ball in. And a kick against Great Britain hooker David Ward for loading himself in the scrum. Trying to get him a third advantage. Oh, a good attempt. Max Grillage, a yard from the line. A minute to full time. England will be, Great Britain will be looking to hold them. And number 11, Wayne Pearce, struggles across field with a leg injury, but he knows he's picked up the man of the match and how well he's deserved it. to get those two front rows nice and tight he tells him I want your boots there he's an ex-hooker himself this this referee and how well he's refereed those scrums this afternoon he's kept them tight and he's kept the ball coming out cleanly from either side he says get down me lads or in words to that effect well he nearly got the ball himself then but it's Australia ball full time into injury time now Greg Grendel, one man, two man, he goes past. Oh, it's too easy. It's too easy. Rod Reddy, number 12, one of the oldest players in the side, puts Australia even further lead at 38 points to four.
Well, they're going to wear the whitewash out here with his, uh, with his cross in the line. A lovely ball here from Brent Kenny again. And here, watch it, Brent Nall. He charges to the line. A man in some support again. And look who it is. Nicholas Sterling and Rod Reddy has the simplest of tasks. Palmeninger noted more for his, his centre play. What opportunities has he had for goal kicking practice? It's not a difficult kick. He slots it easily. And there are the, the final hooter. Australia have given us an exhibition of their skills. 40 points to four in their favour. Eight tries by eight different players. Meninga, Boyd, Broad, Price, Boosted, Kenny, Pearson, Reddy. And eight goals by the man himself, Malvinig. So I'm afraid I've got to eat a little humble pie. I thought Grimbrin might do something. With those two penalty goals from Lee Crooks, it's back to the drawing board for these Great Britain selectors, I'm afraid. With that result,